heavenly King, Comforter, and Spirit of truth, word of one, fill us all things, search your blessings, and give our blood, and abide in us, and cleanse us from every impurity, and save ourselves with good one. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace be with his men. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace be with his men. The Lord open down my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to ages of ages. Lord have mercy. For his beatitude, 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 for
Jesus, MSX Bishop Daniel, for the honorable priesthood and diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of our country, for all civil authorities and for our forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times let us pray to the Lord. Lord for travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives, hostages, and for the unborn and their salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity let us pray to the Lord. Lord Save us in mercy upon us and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Mother Marie, our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other in our whole life unto Christ our God. Attend to the voice of our supplication, work upon us a sign for good, guide us in thy way that we may walk in thy truth, gladden our hearts that we may hear thy holy name, for thou art great and workest wonders, thou alone art God, among the gods there are none like unto you, O Lord, powerful in mercy, good in might, to help and to comfort and to save all those who hope in your holy name. For unto thee are to all glory and in worship to the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit. Now and forever and to ages of ages. Of the Lord of God. 
Christ, pray for the publicly crying. Have mercy on me, O God, and save me. Bring my soul out of prison, and I may give thanks to thy name. The righteous will surround me, for thou wilt deal bountifully with me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The power of thy cross is great, O Lord. Set in one place, it acts throughout the world. It made fishermen into apostles, and the nations into martyrs. May they always pray for our souls. The prophets, apostles, and martyrs of Christ taught us to sing the praises of the consubstantial trinity. They enlightened the nations which had gone astray, and made the sons of man companions of the angels, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. How shall we but marvel at your divine human giving of birth, O soul of baby? For while thou knowing the man, you gave birth to a fatherless son in the flesh, O immaculate virgin, the son born of the father before eternity, who was born of you at the fullness of time. He underwent no mingling, no change, no division, but preserved the fullness of each nature. Entreat him to save our souls, O lady and virgin and mother, of those who confess you in the orthodox manner to be the Theotokos. Wisdom, let us attend. O oh, blessed light of the holy glory of the immortal Father, heaven be holy. Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. 
And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Wisdom, the second Prochemenon, is in the fourth song. Rejoice in God, our helper. Rejoice in God, our helper. Raise a song, sound the timbrel. Rejoice in God, our helper. Rejoice in God, our helper. Wisdom, let us attend. The light of Christ illumines all. Wisdom. The reading is from Proverbs. Let us be attentive. The simple believes every word, but the prudent man considers well his steps. The wise man fears and departs from evil, but the fool rages and is self-confident. He who is quick-tempered acts foolishly, and a man of wicked intentions is hated. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. The evil will bow before the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor man is hated even by his own neighbor, but the rich has many friends. He who despises his neighbor sins, but he who has mercy on the poor happy is he. Do they not go astray who devise evil? But mercy and truth belong to those who devise good. In all labor there is profit, but idle chatter leads only to poverty. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is folly. A true witness delivers his soul, but a deceitful witness speaks lies. In the fear of the Lord there is strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. Peace be unto you, reader.
for Jan recovering from his procedure, for Shayla, Christina, Todd, Lisa, and Lucas, for Joe, Stan, Charles, Kirk, Dwayne, for Patricia, Crystal, Anna, for Teddy, Benny, Jeff, Luke, Kelly, for the health, well-being of the Anastasia, his church, his family, Dimitri families, and for the part in every mission of their sins. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. And we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and venerable house, for those who labor and those who sing, for all the people who are present, who await thy great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, to merciful God, love us mankind, and unto thee we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever unto ages of each Amen. Wisdom, O God, great praiseworthy, who by thy life-creating death of thy Christ has translated us from corruption to incorruption, do thou free all our senses from deadly passion, set over them as a good God the understanding that is within us, and let our eyes abstain from every evil sight, our hearing be inaccessible to idle words, and our tongues be purged of unseemly speech. Make clean our lips with praise, thee, O Lord. Make our hands refrain from base deeds, and to work only which is well-pleasing in thy sight, fortifying our members and our minds by thy grace. For unto thee I dwell glory on and worship to the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever unto ages of angels. Amen. Protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Wisdom, O Master, holy and exceedingly good, we implore thee, who art rich in mercy. Be gracious to us sinners and make us worthy of the reception of the only begotten Son and our God, the King of glory. For behold, his immaculate body and life creating blood, entering at this present hour, about to be set forth on this mystical table by multitudes of heavenly hosts invisibly escorted. <laughs> Grant us to partake of them without condemnation, that through them our mental sight may be illumined, and we may become children of the light and of the day. Through the gift of thy Christ, with whom they are blessed together with an awful and electric spirit, now and forever and to ages of each
who always been well pleasing unto thee, and make us worthy, O Master, with boldness and without condemnation, we dare to call on you, the heavenly God, his Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever unto ages of ages. Take of these life creating mysteries. From to thee have we bowed our heads, awaiting from thee thy rich mercy. Through the grace, compassion, love toward mankind, and then only begotten Son, with whom thou blessed together, with an all holy life bring spirit, now and forever unto ages of angels. I tell the Lord Jesus Christ, and adore the place of glory of the Father. Let us attend the priest, sanctify holy things, are for the holy.
of God and with love and faith draw near.
witnesses of Christ. Let us worthy give thanks unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, and mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Asking that the whole evening may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us commend ourselves and each other in our whole life unto Christ our God. To For the communion of the holy body and blood of thy Christ. And we pray thee, O master of us mankind, keep us under the shelter of thy wings, and grant that even in our last breath we may worthily partake of thy holy things, unto illumination of our soul and body, unto the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, for thou art our sanctification, unto thee who is from glory to the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever unto ages of ages. has led us to these our revered days for purification of souls and bodies, for restraint of passions, and for the hope of the resurrection, who during the forty days has put into the hands of thy servant or Moses the tables and letters divinely inscribed. Grant unto us also, O good one, to fight the good fight, to complete the course of the fast, to preserve the faith undivided, to crush the heads of invisible serpents, to be shown to be conquerors of sins, and without condemnation also to attain and to worship thy holy resurrection. For bless and glorify in the all majestic name of the Father, and the Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever and to ages of ages. Saint of our parish, of the Haro martyr Artemon, of the martyr Crescens, of the martyr Tomias, of the confessor Saint Basil, of Venerable Athusia, and the Venerable Anasta Anastasia, we commemorate today, <clears throat> of the holy righteous hands of God, Joachim and Anna, of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good, and let's make In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The third word of our Savior on the cross is directed primarily to his mother. For the past few Fridays of Lent, we have been examining the last seven words of Jesus as he hung dying on the cross on Good Friday. 
The first Jesus, Jesus word Jesus uttered was a forgiveness addressed to the Father on behalf of those who are crucifying him. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The second word that Jesus uttered was a word of salvation spoken to the repentant thief on the cross. I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. The third word that Jesus uttered on the cross was a word of compassion addressed to primarily to his mother. As we hear in John chapter 19, verse 25 through 27, near the cross stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When he saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. And to his beloved disciple, he said, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Of the four gospel writers, John is the only one who records Mary, the mother of God's presence at the cross. It would be expected that Jesus' mother be in Jerusalem at Passover. After all, we read in Luke chapter 2, verse 41, every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. Probably after Joseph's death, presumed to have taken place before Jesus' ministry began, Mary would have come up to Jerusalem for the feast with friends and family. Now her son is in trouble, arrested, tried, condemned, crucified, and now dying. Surely Mary's place is close to her son. And so St. Simeon's prophecy given at Jesus' 40-day dedication as a baby at the temple comes to pass, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. She is near him now. She is also consoled by friends. Just who are these friends? Mary plus three other women were there. Mary Magdalene, Mary the wife of Clopas, seems to be corresponding easily to Mary, the mother of James the Younger and Joses. She is probably the other Mary who was with Mary Magdalene at the tomb Friday night and on Sunday morning. The third woman may be Salome, who is the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And we have the beloved disciple, the Apostle John. John the Apostle and Evangelist was one of the three disciples closest to him. And he is the only male disciple who is at the foot of the cross. As Jesus was dying, the other disciples were too afraid to be so closely identified with a man condemned by the Romans, as well as by the leaders of their own people. Jesus' third word from the cross is to the small band of faithful friends below his fa fascinating for all it implies. First, Jesus addresses his mother, not as mother, but as woman translated appropriately as dear woman. We might sense a coldness of this term as used in our culture and time, but in Jesus' culture, it was perfectly proper for a man to address a woman this way, but still strange for a son to a mother. Jesus addressed his mother as woman at the first miracle of his ministry at the wedding at Cana in Galilee by changing water into wine. It only seems proper to address her as woman at his last miracle of his ministry, for his hour has come on the cross. Jesus intends for these words to be understood as a formal testimony or disposition under Jewish family law. As Mary's firstborn, Jesus is legally responsible for her welfare to ensure that she has place to live and food to eat during her widow widowhood. Jesus, being Mary's only son, now entrusts his mother to John's care, and John takes this commission seriously. Here Jesus is dying in agony, grasping for each breath. He sees his mother, the one who comforted him through all his childhood. Through his cuts and bruises, when he was a boy, he would run home to his mother and instantly be wrapped in her protective care as motherly love. But now he sees her at the foot of the cross, heartbroken, weeping, inconsolable. His heart goes out to her rather than being consumed by understandable concern for his own welfare. He is concerned for her welfare. She is a widow, soon to be a widow, who has, will be known as a mother of a crucified criminal, Jesus. Life will not be easy for her. I think the first thing we can learn from this word from the cross 
is that we must love our parents. Yes, sometimes our parents misunderstand us or disapprove of our decisions we make. Sometimes they can hurt us grievously. Jesus, too, had felt the hurt of misunderstanding from his family, even his mother. It's apparent that during Jesus' ministry, his family didn't understand him. In Mark chapter 3, verse 21 and 35 through 35, his family thought he is out of his mind and went to take charge of him. His close cousins apparently came along with Mary. In John chapter 7, verse 5, we hear, even his own brothers did not believe in him. Having said that, we are not absolved from of family obligations. The Apostle Paul is adamant in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, we hear, if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. How do we reconcile our primary commitment to Jesus with responsibility for our families? Sometimes with great difficulty, but to put Christ first doesn't mean that we are free to neglect our parents. It means only that we get our priorities in proper relation to each other. God will give us the wisdom to work this out. Here at the end of his life, we see in Jesus the tender love of a son for his mother, a mother who had sometimes misunderstood him. As he dies, he settles his earthly obligations as best as he can. We hear him say, dear woman, here is your son, here is your mother. In the mystery of the incarnation, the eternal Son of God became a helpless child dependent upon his mother for physical and spiritual sustenance when God became man. He took no halfway measures. He went through the helplessness of every child development in body, mind, and soul that each of us has known. As Jesus was growing, someone taught him to behold the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. Someone taught him to observe so keenly the pathos and drama of village life. The Son of Man saw life with all the sensitivity of a woman, and that woman was Mary, the Theotokos, for truly he was fully God and fully man. There her son hung before her eyes, but she was helpless. His wounds bled, but she dared not stop the flow of the blood. His mouth was parched, hot like a oven, but she could not moisten it. His body ached, arched with the pain of the scourge and tearing of, tearing of the thorns, the piercing of the nails, but she could not soothe him. Those outstretched arms used to clasp her neck. She used to play patty cake with those little hands now pierced with nails and tie those little sandals on his busy little feet now supporting his heavy dying body. As the taunts and mockery was being flung at him, she hears her dying son voice, woman, behold your son. Now if Mary needs a son to love and cherish and provide for her needs, she must look to the disciple John. Jesus was fulfilling to the last detail the letter of the law, thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. If we love Jesus, we will also love and honor his mother, full of grace, for she becomes our mother. And just as we honor God, we must honor our parents, and especially Jesus' mother. Maybe that's why the evangelist John did not use his own name as being there at the foot of the cross, but used beloved disciple. Maybe we are called to be the beloved disciple, and honor Mary, for behold, she becomes our mother. For now we become, as followers of Christ, children of God. During Good Friday evening at the Lamentations, the church poetically placed in Mary's mouth as she stood before the cross, watching her son die with these words, Thy pure mother wept bitter tears over thee, O Jesus, and she cried, How can I lay thee, my son, in the grave? Who will give me water and fountain of tears, exclaimed the divinely wed virgin, that I may weep for my beloved Jesus. O light of my eyes, my beloved child, how is that you are now hidden in the grave? When people are suffering or even dying on their deathbed, one of the greatest needs to give that person dying or suffering 
is to have someone stand by them. No words needed, just a simple presence and a loving touch from your hands can bring tremendous support, encouragement, hope, and love to a dying person. Maybe those words to Mary, his mother, was Jesus' final thank you to his mom for, his wonderful, for her wonderful staying power she gave him throughout his life. The power of her presence, her standing presence at the cross as his mother will echo with victory when we sing at Good Friday Lamentations of the Ninth Ode. Do not lament me, O mother, for I shall arise and be glorified. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. amen. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. <laughs> Get your Kleenex. No. Um, tomorrow, uh, no, Vesp no Vespers tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, Sunday will be the fourth Sunday of uh, Great Lent, and we're plugging through. Uh, Wednesday, we have pre-sanctified liturgy at 11 o'clock, followed by adult education class. Thursday, we have... Um, uh, great Canon for St. Mary of Egypt. So Thursday at 6 o'clock, Great Canon of St. Mary of Egypt on Thursday. Friday, next Friday, we have uh, pre-sanctified liturgy again at 5.30, and then, uh, then we'll continue on and plug it along. So God bless you. We have, uh, uh, everybody is uh, welcome to come for our potluck, uh, um, potluck dinner, or potluck, uh, Lenten potluck over there. So God bless, and God bless everybody over there. Sing before thy cross. Before thy cross, we bow down in worship, O Master, at thy holy
ones 